So adding the panel in is going to be pretty straightforward. It's going to be exactly the same process as adding our bricks, but of course with a paddle, we only have one of them. So it makes uh, it a little bit easier. So the first thing I'm going to do, if you haven't already, copy over the paddle graphic uh, that I supplied as part of this course. And we already know that the first thing that we need to do is head over to our states, head over to boot and go ahead and load this asset in or this image in. So we're going to call this paddle. We're going to reference the paddle PNG and that's loaded in now and we can create a prefab for this paddle. Now we don't necessarily need to create a prefab for this paddle, but I like doing this because when we eventually start to move our mouse, we want the logic that determines where the paddle should be inside of its own class. Uh, it's always nicer to kind of break these things up. So let's go ahead and just copy the code that we have over the bricks. It's going to be pretty much similar. And let's go ahead and create this paddle .js prefab. Okay, let's change the name over to paddle. And of course, we're going to do exactly the same thing here. We're going to reference the parent constructor passing in the position that we want uh, this to be in. And of course, we reference the paddle graphic that we've just pulled in. Now, we're still going to enable physics on this because, of course, the ball needs to bounce off of the paddle. But what we're also going to do is just change the uh, anchor over to this. So we're going to set this to, and you'll see this often created 0.5 and 0.5 just so we can position it correctly within the world now immovable is also true this doesn't necessarily mean that we can't move the object but if for example we didn't add the fact this was immovable when the ball hits the paddle the paddle would actually kind of drop down and <laughs> leave the screen so we want this to be immovable even though in the update method that we're going to look at a little bit later this is going to actually be able to move OK, so now that we've done this, what we can do is over in our game, go ahead and import this paddle. And we're going to do exactly the same thing here as we did before. Set up paddle. And we're going to go ahead and create that set up paddle method. And of course, import that and add it to our world. So to do this, then we're going to say this paddle and we're going to assign this to a new paddle like so. And we're going to go ahead and pass in this game because we know that that is required as part of a phaser sprite. We're going to say this game world center x because we want the paddle to be in the center by default and we're going to say this game world and then the height but we're going to minus 100 that's just going to be 100 pixels from the bottom of the world now at the moment uh, we look like we have an unexpected token so let's just add that comma in uh, the paddle is not defined so at the top here of course we want to do exactly the same thing and go ahead and pull the paddle in like so Give that a refresh and it looks like brick is not defined let's see why that might be of course we've probably left something in here to do with a brick and of course there we go so you probably noticed that let's go ahead and export the paddle glass that we've just created so at the moment then the paddle isn't visible on the screen what we need to do is over in our game as we set the paddle up we're going to say this game add existing and we're going to go ahead and define this paddle like so. Give that a refresh or wait for it to reload. And you now have your paddle at the bottom of the screen. And you can adjust where this sits. So you could say something like minus 200 if you wanted this to be a little bit closer to the items here. It's entirely up to you. So that is pretty much it. We've added our paddle in and we're ready to move on to the next part where we're going to look at actually moving the paddle along the screen using the mouse.